Oh, that's a bad one. Oh. That's not a trout. Not there, though. Twig water. Oh, black bream with pants. Oh, man. So today we are fishing some twig water. In our last episode of Pat Teaches Everyone Fly Fishing, we're on a big river, learning some big river nymphing techniques. Today, we've switched it up in a big way. We're fishing some tiny water. Now, we've just seen a fish rise up here in between me and the camera. So I'm fishing our way up slowly. That's the big thing with twig water, is you don't want to rush at all. Especially in this first part we've dropped into, super still, as you can see these ripples. These ripples usually weren't here. This is because I'm walking through it. Usually it's completely still and you can just see how much just me jump, jumping in the water has sort of rippled that water up. Now, part two, twig water. Get used to that right there. So to start off this morning, I'm fishing a dry dropper. Just a small stimmy and a nymph under it. About 30 centimeters the dropper. Again, it's super low. Um, we don't need a long dropper. Similar, similar to our hopper techniques video. Soon as that, those, you know, that nymph might catch our first couple of fish, but as soon as that dry comes into play, I'm gonna clip that nymph off. Makes casting a little bit easier, especially we've got all this snaggy stuff around us. So just dry dropper to start with, nine foot leader. Nothing too flash. And then moving on if nothing grabs it. Now I know this stream like the back of my hand. I've been fishing here for a long time. And this is about as low as I've seen it. So basically with twig water, especially in the height of summer, you're gonna come across low clear periods, especially after a, a stint of no rain for a couple of weeks. Um, just stick with it. It's gonna be a tough day, I can already imagine. Getting a fish in these conditions is sometimes some of the most rewarding fishing you can do. So I'm fishing a nice short rod today. Nice seven foot six uh, three weight, nice and light. Um, good for small, short range casting. So when approaching a run like this, we've got a nice sort of likely hole, a bit deeper, we've got a couple caddis bouncing on the surface there, and we've got two main seams. Depending on which run you're fishing, it'll be different. Now, the main current and the one I wanna fish buckets out on the right side of the river there. This left side, Still has a nice riffle and is a bit shallower. Again, any part, any part of the river that physically can hold a trout could. So we're gonna fish our way across to our likely spot. Now what I don't wanna do, unlike our big river nymphing, or big river fishing, is bomb nice long casts all the way up through the middle of that. There could be a fish sitting right here at my feet that I can't see, and if I'm going for something that may be up there, I'm gonna line this fish, I'm gonna spook him. So to start off in this run, I'm gonna fish nice and close. Not even halfway up the run. Cool, now I've covered that spot. I'm gonna go slightly to the right in that main current on the left seam. Right into the back. Now I'm gonna move across. Nice short cast right at the back of this pool. Now no fly line at any point in those three casts has touched the water. And that's a good thing, especially when it's low and clear. We wanna keep our fly line off the water as much as we can. High sticking, I know I've got a short rod, but high sticking in here isn't too hard because we're in nice tight quarters, nice small streams. Now what I'm gonna do here, instead of lengthening more fly line and bombing a nice long cast up, as you just saw, I took a step up. And I'm gonna do the exact same cast and just reach a little bit further up there. I'm not changing anything with my cast, I just move myself. Again, fishing your way across, covering all the water effectively in our lanes again. Oop, there's a little bump. Now we're getting into that sort of deep zone that I want to fish in this run. It's that nymph's finding bottom, which is good. Now again, a couple more steps up. Now I'm going to go for the kill shot. See if we can't get one. Cool, so we've effectively fished to the top of this run. Walking our way up, high sticking, covering every piece of the water. Didn't get one through there, that's okay. But those same, same techniques apply across all of your twig, twig water fishing. When you've got a nymph under there, nymph and indicator, nymph under dry, dry dropper, whatever you want to call it. If anything happens to that, I don't care if you know it's a rock, I want you to strike everything. Strike hard and strike often. 
because if you don't strike and it is a fish, you'll be kicking yourself. Oh! Oh! There's like 10 in here. And they all spooked the second I breathed. Also positioning yourself behind rocks and behind bushes and things stops your bow wave from sort of screwing up that part of the river. Now I'm gonna sit down here because I'm cool. To see how from this morning versus here, now I've walked up through it, there's no riffle of, you know, there's, no, there's no bow wave of where I've walked up through it. And even that just, that slight amount of force, you know, of something disturbing the water is enough for them to spook, especially in these conditions. Now, just because we haven't had bulk success doesn't mean they're one not in here and two you won't have bulk success <laughs> just our conditions today and these are the same techniques that i'd use on any twig water whether it's higher levels obviously on the lower levels now we can't get too close because the fish are very spooky today and what i've got to do is stand back and if i do our normal false cast i'm going to clean that i'm going to collect that tree so what i have to do is a bow and arrow cast now, all a bow and arrow cast is, is you hold your last fly, in this case it's a nymph, we're gonna hold it up to our ear, point the rod where you wanna aim, where you wanna go, bend that line, put some tension in that rod, and just let go of your fly. Don't flick forward with your right hand, just let go of that fly. And it'll pop it down nicely on the water. It's not something you can do at a long range, it's nice and short, but it can tuck your flies in to other places you can't get a normal false cast. Like there. And you'll get a split second of fishing. Oh, there's one. Landed right on his head and he spooked. Oh, see, there's my false cast. That proves the point right there. <laughs> bow and arrow casts, they work. Now, a word of warning with your bow and arrow casts. Holding that fly and flicking it out can end up in uh, collecting your thumb or collecting the back of your ear. So instead of holding the hook and the fly for our bow and arrow casts completely like that, when we let our fly, when we let our fly go, it's just gonna collect our thumb and we're gonna get spiked. What I do when I hold my fly for a bow and arrow cast is I just hold the very bend of that hook. If that fly's got a couple of tail feathers or tail material, you can hold that. But so that hook point's exposed. So when you let go, it doesn't end up catching your finger or your ear on the way through. Now what I'm doing here is I'm just gonna ditch our nymph. So I'm going a single dry now, and I've just changed down from a nice big rubber leg stimmy to a smaller LK caddis. So smaller profile again, and I've also sized down my tippet. So I've gone one size smaller diameter tippet. It's gonna be a little less offensive for them, and hopefully that'll get it done for our low clear water. It's a good tip for when you're fishing spooky fish, size down flies and also size down your tippet. There's one. <laughs> nice. Oh, there he goes. <laughs> Let himself go. Nice, he just flapped off the rock there. Nice long distance release. Now that's just the second pull after we change that dry over. Just a little bit smaller, a little bit smaller tippet. And we came up with a nice little flapper. Now I'm used to throwing big grasshoppers on the tumor, which is a lot of fun. But here it's very different. Throwing a big, nice, nice big stimmy with a heavy tippet, what I'm used to, didn't get the job done. As soon as I sized down that fly to a nice small elk hair, it's about a 16 with 4X tippet, instantly got a little fish. There's no, oop. oh, that's a bad one. When your fly's stuck up there like that, don't just snap it off. If you can reach your rod tip up and just touch the fly with your rod tip, like that, there you go. Clean your fly off, and you've still got the fly. Just don't shove your rod tip in there too hard or you might snap your rod. No success with that for that. Yeah, exactly. Stay up here, mate. There we go. Another fish. One on the net. How good. Now he's a bit better than that other one and it's the same thing, right, like the smallest little piece of water you can imagine. Just that elk hair popped in and he took advantage. Now we missed the hook up, but you already know what happens. Fish eats, pat strikes. Now, like I said at the start, fishing super low and super clear water can be the most, some of the most challenging fishing you'll do. 
but it can also be some of the most rewarding. And you, when you're rewarded with a beautiful high country rainbow like that, hey, can't really complain. <laughs> now, I was just saying before, I haven't done this sort of fishing in ages, fishing a tiny dry fly, really techy water. It's so much fun. Really push your skills in terms of casting, drag free drifts, high sticking, all that's like all the stuff you practice and practice and practice. It all has to be textbook in this sort of situation. There's no wiggle room for error, especially when the fish are this spooky. That's why it's so rewarding. There's one. Nice. Nice. On that elk hair again. Oh, that's so much fun. <laughs> cool. Ooh. There he goes. <laughs> Get the slow mo release, Pat. Nope. Off he went. <laughs> Now of all the flies that I have in my box, I've got about five fly boxes in this bag. The one that's doing it for me is the only one I have. And that's always the way. And now I've got to get it back. I don't know how well we're going to do, but we'll give it a, give it a red hot crack. Oh, that sucked. Yes! <laughs> oh, and she comes back. Yes! Nice. <laughs> oh, a little dry spell for a moment as we fished up through that gorgeous part of the river. Oh, and he's gone. Not there though. Nor there. Ah, man, the scenery through there was something special. And we come up with a nice little rainbow to finish the day. Not the biggest one, not the hero fish of the day, but a cracking way to finish. Nice little rainbow. Woo! See you, mate. In some beautiful country. Righto, guys. Well, that was how to fish some twig water. Hopefully, you learned a few things in terms of casting, where to fish, what to fish. So, apply those same tips and techniques across all your fishing in your small streams, and you'll have some success. So, now we've covered some big water tactics, covered some twig water tactics. Let us know what you want to see next, guys. Drop a comment below. We'd love to hear from you, and we'll um, we'll see you very soon. Let's get out of here.